California is building a new reservoir that could hold enough water to supply 4.5 million homes for an entire year. The price tag? Nearly $7 billion. Yet even if they finish building it tomorrow, this mega reservoir might sit empty for years. The reasons why reveal fundamental challenges with how America builds infrastructure in the 21st century. This is the Sites Reservoir, California's most ambitious water project in half a century. If completed, it would become the state's eighth largest reservoir, capturing excess water from the Sacramento River during wet months and storing it for droughts. On paper, it sounds ideal. California needs more water storage, climate change is making droughts longer and floods more intense, and after decades of planning, construction is finally moving forward. But this project has been unfolding since the 1950s. That's right. This reservoir was first proposed over 70 years ago during the Eisenhower era, with modern studies kicking off around 2006. So why is a project everyone agrees we need taking so long to build? And more importantly, why might it fail even if it succeeds? To understand Sites Reservoir, you first need to understand California's water problem. The state's existing reservoirs are struggling. During the recent drought years, some dropped to just 20% capacity. Lake Mead and Lake Powell, which California partially depends on, hit record lows. Meanwhile, atmospheric rivers dump billions of gallons of water that simply flow out to sea because there's nowhere to store it. According to the Sites Project Authority, in April 2025, they calculated that if Sites Reservoir had existed during recent wet months, it could have captured over 550,000 acre feet of water. That's enough to supply 3 million people for an entire year, water that instead rushed past Sacramento and into the Pacific Ocean. The reservoir would work differently than traditional dams. It's what engineers call an off-stream facility. Instead of blocking a river directly, it would divert water from the Sacramento River only during high flow periods, storing it in a valley created by building several earthen and rock-filled dams. Think of it like a giant bathtub that only fills when there's too much water in the system. The capacity? 1.5 million acre feet, roughly twice the size of San Francisco Bay. Now let's talk money because the financial story of Sites Reservoir reveals significant challenges. When California voters approved funding through Proposition 1 in 2014, the estimated cost for storage projects like Sites was around $2.7 billion statewide, with Sites' share initially pegged at about $2 billion. By 2021, that had climbed to $3.9 billion. Today, the official estimate sits at $6.8 billion, though some analysts suggest overruns could push it higher. The California Policy Center ran the numbers and found that even at the current price tag, the cost per acre foot of water would be $17,875 annually. That's about 35 times more expensive than existing water sources. Why such cost overruns? First, there's inflation. The project has dragged on so long that construction materials now cost double what they did a decade ago. Second, environmental requirements keep expanding. The project needs to protect everything from salmon runs to Native American cultural sites, adding complexity and expense. Third, the technical challenges are considerable. The main dams will be earthen structures up to 287 feet tall, with seven saddle dams and extensive pumping systems to move water uphill through tunnels and pipelines. These features are designed to withstand earthquakes and control seepage in the site's soft, expansive soils. Money and engineering aren't even the biggest obstacles. The main challenge is politics. The site's reservoir sits at the intersection of competing interests that have been fighting over California water for generations. You've got farmers who want irrigation, cities that need drinking water, environmental groups protecting ecosystems, Native American tribes defending ancestral lands, and federal agencies balancing it all. In August 2025, Governor Newsom announced $219 million in additional state funding, calling it part of California's climate resilience strategy. But that same month, critics pointed out that the project faces what they call insurmountable hurdles. The situation gets complicated with legal challenges. Environmental groups like Friends of the River and the NRDC have filed challenges under California's environmental laws, 
arguing the reservoir could reduce water flows downstream and harm salmon populations. They dispute the basic math, claiming the reservoir might yield as little as 22,000 acre-feet per year in dry conditions, not the 240,000 acre-feet annually that proponents promise on average. And then there's the displacement issue. Building sites would flood about 15,000 acres of pristine grassland and oak woodlands, along with 144 cultural sites sacred to native tribes. These aren't just statistics, they're irreplaceable habitats and heritage, and many argue the mitigation plan don't fully address the losses. A critical concern is that even if site's reservoir gets built, there's no guarantee it will have water to store. Climate scientists are raising red flags about the project's fundamental assumptions. The reservoir depends on excess water from the Sacramento River during wet periods. But what if those wet periods become less frequent? What if the river itself has less water to spare? Recent studies suggest California's snowpack, which feeds the Sacramento River, could decline by 30 to 40 percent by 2050. Atmospheric rivers might become more intense but less predictable. The very climate patterns the reservoir is designed to buffer against might make it obsolete. There's also the legal question of water rights. California water law is Byzantine, with some rights dating back to the gold rush. Even if there's physically water available, sites might not have the legal right to take it. Senior water rights holders get first dibs, and during droughts, there might be nothing left for sites to capture. Critics like Carolee Krieger of the California Sport Fishing Protection Alliance have warned that the project could become a very expensive boondoggle if reduced river flows and legal hurdles limit its water capture, producing minimal benefits at a high cost. To understand sites, reservoirs, challenges, it's worth looking at other water projects. Take China's Three Gorges Dam, the world's largest hydroelectric project. It took 17 years to build and displaced 1.3 million people, but it works, generating substantial amounts of power and controlling floods. The key difference? China's government could push through opposition in ways impossible in a democracy. Or consider the Hoover Dam, built in just five years during the 1930s. It came in under budget and ahead of schedule, but it was also built in an era with minimal environmental review and worker safety standards that would be criminal today. Nearly 100 workers died during construction. The closest American parallel might be California's own Diamond Valley Lake, completed in 2000. It took 20 years from conception to completion and cost $2 billion. The important point, it's worked exactly as designed, providing crucial backup water during droughts. The lesson? These projects can succeed, but the timeline and cost in modern America bear no resemblance to historical examples. So where does Sites Reservoir stand today? The project has gained significant momentum this year. In January 2025, the Sites Project Authority announced competitive procurement for a $3 billion construction manager, with proposals submitted in March and a contractor selection expected by year-end, now just weeks away. They secured key permits, like the US Fish and Wildlife Service's biological opinion in July, and $780 million in federal commitments from the Bureau of Reclamation. Groundbreaking is targeted for late 2026, with full operations by 2030. But even optimistic projections show the reservoir wouldn't be fully operational until 2030 at the earliest. That's 15 years after voters approved funding and over 70 years after early concepts were floated. The project has some genuine wins. National status from Proposition 1 in 2014 ensures federal support and multiple water districts have signed on as partners. Yet challenges keep mounting. Technical reviews are ongoing, environmental permits are still pending, and the fundamental questions about water availability remain unanswered. The site's reservoir story is about more than just water. It's about how America has lost the ability to build big things quickly. Environmental reviews that once took months now take years. Lawsuits can delay projects indefinitely. Costs spiral while nothing gets built. The very safeguards designed to protect communities and ecosystems have created a system where even necessary projects face near impossible obstacles. The paradox is that climate change isn't waiting for our bureaucracy to catch up. Every year of delay means more flooding, more droughts, more communities without reliable water. The perfect has become the enemy of the good, and in trying to avoid all negative impacts, we might be guaranteeing worse outcomes. Will Sites Reservoir ever be completed? Probably, eventually. Will it work as intended? That's far less certain. 
The tragedy is that California needs this reservoir, or something like it. But needing something and building it are two different things in modern America. And by the time Sites Reservoir is ready to catch water, the climate might have changed so much that there's no water left to catch. The question isn't whether we can build a $6.8 billion reservoir, it's whether we can build it fast enough to matter. And based on 70 years of history, the answer might already be no. What do you think? Is Sites Reservoir a necessary investment in California's future or an expensive monument to bureaucratic dysfunction? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to hear if you've seen the impacts of California's water challenges firsthand. If this breakdown of mega projects gone sideways hit home, smash that like button. Subscribe for more dives into unimaginable builds that test the limits of engineering and politics. And hit the bell so you never miss an update. Thanks for watching, stay hydrated, and I'll see you in the next one.